In 2014, the UAB Blazers shut down their football program. Why? Before going into exhaustive detail regarding its end, it's worth looking back on all the years before. Founded as a club team in 1989, the Blazers would begin their rapid ascent to Division I under the tutelage of athletic director Jean Bartow, playing their first Division I-A game in 1996 against Auburn. What followed was a rocky 18 years of football, yet one with its fair share of highlights. Of note is their 2013 13-10 upset of the LSU Tigers under first-year head coach Nick Saban, a 2004 berth in their first postseason game, the Hawaii Bowl against, well, Hawaii, and the entire playing career of Blazer and Atlanta Falcons legend Roddy White. Since their 2004 season, however, through a combination of ineffectual coaching and subpar facilities, UAB has struggled to put together anything resembling a winning season failing to finish at or above 500 nine years in a row, hemorrhaging fans as the program fell further and further into the abyss. Then came 2014. Under first-year head coach Bill Clark, the Blazers would achieve a quality of play unseen since the early 2000s, fielding one of the group of five's best balanced offenses under quarterback Cody Clements and running back Jordan Howard both helping propel their offense to an average of 33.2 points per game and 431.8 combined yards of offense per game. And while a subpar defense would keep them from competing for a conference title, they'd finish the year, finally, at 500, qualifying for a bowl for the second time in program history. And even better news, attendance had doubled from the previous year. There was tangible excitement for the program. At last, the Blazers seemed to have turned a corner, which made UAB President Ray L. Watt's announcement all the more heartbreaking. And looked at the opportunities for our other sports teams. We knew that we had to make some difficult but clearly necessary decisions. On December 2nd, 2014, the University of Alabama Birmingham's football program ceased to exist. Cutting through an endless amount of PR speak, Watts outlines the primary reason for the shutdown of the Blazers. Money. According to an outside accounting firm, the cost to maintain a competitive football program would cost the university right around $49 million, a price tag the university simply could not afford. This, alongside an apparent lack of philanthropic demand to foot the bill and general support from the community, would ultimately be the deciding factors in UAB's decision. The move, while shocking, was hardly without precedent. Nineteen years before the death of the Blazers, the Pacific Tigers would face similar economic woes, and their football program would be axed as a result. With the same fate befalling Long Beach State in 1991 and Wichita State in 1986, the whole closure, while depressing, seems to be fairly cut and dry. Except, this presser does not give the whole story. Far from it, in fact. Money is indeed a factor, but so is a larger battle UAB has fought since its promotion to Division I. A long-standing feud between the Blazers, the Alabama Board of Trustees, and the mighty Crimson Tide. Let's revisit UAB's history for a second. In 2006, 12th year head coach Watson Brown the man who'd bring the Blazers into Division I and orchestrate some of its best moments would resign his post for an administrative role. His replacement would be his offensive coordinator, former Auburn quarterback and Heisman Pat Sullivan, who had spent the last seven years on Brown's staff. The hope was to provide consistency, and with UAB, Brown, and Sullivan agreeing to terms, consistency seemed to be exactly what the young program would get. 
And then the Alabama Board of Trustees came in and nixed the plan. The motives weren't exactly clear, but the results spoke for themselves. Watson Brown would leave for Tennessee Tech, and Pat Sullivan would leave for Samford. Like that, UAB's founding figures were scattered to the wind. But thankfully, there was a suitable backup. Jimbo Fisher, LSU offensive coordinator under both Nick Saban and Les Miles, one of the best up-and-coming defensive minds in the nation, is looking for his first head coaching job. Better yet, personal ties to Birmingham have brought him to the Blazers. All that was left was to agree on salary, to which both parties agreed to a $600,000 annual salary, with half being provided through private donors. And then, at the 11th hour, again, the Alabama Board of Trustees swooped in and blocked the deal, citing, quote, fiscal responsibility. What's been theorized as the actual motive behind this move was an attempt to lure Jimbo Fisher into joining his former boss Nick Saban in Tuscaloosa, who was in the process of joining the Crimson Tide when UAB went after Fisher. Of course, he ended up in Tallahassee instead, but the option was certainly on the table at the time, making it all the more convenient that the Board of Trustees would suddenly be so focused on austerity measures. Now, without their first and second options, they were left with Neil Calloway, Mark Rick's offensive coordinator from 2001 to 2006. Now, if you were a Bulldog fan during that time, you can probably attest that their offense in that era were far from world beaters, which coupled with his recent DUI charges made him a less than desirable candidate. This was further supported by the fact that no other program at the time looking for a new head coach wanted him. Hell, UAB didn't either, but he was the only candidate the board would let the Blazers hire. Signed to a $200,000 a year salary for five years, $175,000 less than what Brown made, the results were exactly what you would expect. He'd start out with a 2-10 season his first year, the worst record in UAB history up until that point, and he'd finish out his contract without a single winning season. He'd be let go in 2011 and replaced by Arkansas Offensive Coordinator Derek McGee, who'd similarly failed to achieve success in Birmingham before being let go in the 2013 season. Coaching was not UAB's only hindrance. For years, they would struggle with their outdated facilities and their home stadium. Birmingham's Legion Field, which served as UAB's home field since their founding, was considered by many as one of Division I football's worst venues. It was old and in dire need of repairs. It was far too big for a program like UAB's, making their already present attendance issue look even worse. And speaking of attendance issues, it was on the other end of Birmingham, just far enough away from campus to be inconvenient to attend regularly. Multiple attempts would be made by the university to construct a smaller venue on campus, with the board shutting it down as, quote, the wrong project at the wrong time, citing the Blazers' lack of attendance, a lack of attendance primarily caused by an off-campus stadium, as one of the board's deciding factors, the other, of course, being cost. If a stadium was off the table, maybe a new practice facility. Shortly before 2014, it seemed as if, after years of waiting, the Blazers would finally break ground on a new facility. Schematics were drawn up, and a budget was set at right around $10 million. The cost, of course, was too much for the board to bear. If a stadium or practice facility was too much to ask for, how about a practice field that didn't actively injure players? Better yet, a brand new practice field worth around $1 million that was completely paid for through private donations. Even this would be shot down by the board. Wait, sorry. It would be shot down by the board. The board would shoot down the notion that they shot it down. And somehow the project would fade into nothing when the axe finally came down on the program as a whole. Now, I believe I've made it painfully clear that the Alabama Board of Trustees does not care for the UAB football program, actively hindering it again and again and again under the guise of, quote, fiscal responsibility. The only question left is why. There are three factors that play the largest role in this weird interstate rivalry. 
with the first being the most public. UAB's football program in 2014 and before ran at a deficit. A lot of Group of Five teams do, and I do genuinely believe that the concept of putting more public funds into a program losing money by the year with the hope that they'd be in the green eventually didn't exactly sit right to some in the board. While that thought process could easily explain the on-campus stadium going nowhere, it does little to explain the rest. The cost a new practice facility would put on the University of Alabama system was estimated at around $5 million. The cost of hiring Jimbo Fisher was around $300,000, and the cost of putting in a new practice field was genuinely nothing. All were shot down. And while austerity measures made a little bit of sense in the mid-2000s, considering the state Alabama football was in at the time, it could hardly be justified in the 2010s. Money does not tell it all here. The University of Alabama at Birmingham serves one big purpose to their entire circuit, their medical school. Being renowned both within state borders and nationally, it's the medical school that the Board of Trustees care the most about and anything that can hinder the growth of UAB's medical department is, to some, a threat. In a letter written to the university from board member Finnis John regarding the planned stadium, he outlined the worries he had that the stadium project would take away funds better allocated for the medical school. It's a reasonable, albeit not entirely accurate, read of the situation, and one that puts a lot of these moves against the Blazers in context. But there's one more contributing factor one that goes back a lot further, and one that's a lot more personal. While the Crimson Tide are undoubtedly the South's most prestigious college football program, their college basketball history is a lot less esteemed, cycling through streaks of above-average basketball and painful mediocrity. In the 80s, Alabama basketball was hitting their stride under head coach Wimp Sanderson, making the NCAA tourney six years in a row between 1981 and 87, and four years in a row from 1988 to 1992. UAB basketball had also found consistent success, having their own NCAA tourney streak from 1980 to 87, and making it as far as the Elite Eight in 1982. It's around here, in 1991, where the NCAA got a letter from UAB's head basketball coach and athletic director, Jean Bartow, where he both urged the NCAA to investigate the Alabama basketball program on alleged violations and claimed a few of these coaches implicated in these alleged violations were trained by the Bear Bryant. Tuscaloosa would not take these comments well, and while they would eventually be revoked in 1993 with Bartow claiming they were made under duress, the damage had already been done, especially in the eyes of one Paul Bryant Jr., Bear Bryant's son and an incredibly influential member of the Alabama Board of Trustees since the year 2000. Between these three motives, genuine budget and community buy-in concerns, concerns over opportunity cost, and Paul Jr.'s personal vendetta, there is the genuine reason UAB football could not continue. The game was rigged from the start, and the Blazers' 25-year-long football experiment could finally rest. That is, if only the city of Birmingham would allow it. The outrage following the decision was immense. For years, going all the way back to UAB's 2006 coaching debacle, people around the program have suspected that the board wanted to get rid of Blazer football. And in this final 2014 decision, it felt like a clear-as-day confirmation. Protests would break out on campus in downtown Birmingham. A fund aimed at fixing the university's budget concerns was started, and worse yet for the Board of Trustees, UAB basketball was lighting up the court, making their first deep push into the NCAA tourney since 2004. This would put more eyes on UAB, and of course, their now deceased football program. Many, even within Birmingham, couldn't care less about the Blazer football program prior to it being axed. Yet as their plight began being seen by more and more people, 
And as the history between UAB Athletics and the Alabama Board of Trustees came to the surface, the Blazers became more than a middling Group of Five team. They became a martyr, a small college just wanting to play football being sabotaged at every turn by the Big Bad Crimson Tide Board of Trustees and their nepotist overlord. In June of 2015, after $27 million was collected through donation to revive the football program, Watt would officially reverse his decision. UAB football, after being dead for the better part of seven months, would be revived, set to return to the field in 2017. Better yet, with the $27 million the city of Birmingham had donated, the Blazers could finally get their practice facility, breaking ground in 2016. They would retain head coach Bill Clark going into their first season back from the dead, hoping to build upon the success he had found in 2014, which they enthusiastically did. 8-5 in their first year back, alongside their second bowl berth in program history, falling a single game short of making the Conference USA Championship game, all with attendance numbers similar or greater than 2014. Then came 2018, going 11-3, winning their first conference title against Middle Tennessee before winning their first bowl game in dominant fashion against Northern Illinois. What followed was two more Conference USA Conference Finals and three more bowl games for the Blazers before getting promoted to the American Athletic Conference, playing all of their home games, at last, in their own on-campus stadium, Protective Stadium. All of this while the university began work on a $190 million biomedical research facility, proving to Finnis John you can, indeed, walk and chew gum at the same time. Things are not exactly perfect in Birmingham. In 2024, UAB will look to bounce back from their first losing season since their revival, hoping new head coach Trent Dilfer will be able to maintain the momentum his predecessor and the university he coached for fought tooth and nail to have. Despite recent blinding success, attendance remains a looming issue, and there's a possibility that the Alabama Board of Trustees will pounce once more as soon as the Blazers are vulnerable. But for now, and for the foreseeable future, there will be college football in the city of Birmingham.